Thank you, everyone. Uh, great to be here. Uh, <clears throat> there's a really important reason why I'm here. I think you guys know. Uh, it's, it's really not because ABC does such a, an amazing job, uh, and they do. Uh, you think about it, they make life easier for elderly people to grow older with dignity. Uh, but that's not really why I'm here. Um, I'm not here because Bob Elias over there is a saint, and he is. He does so much work uh, for ABCD, it's unbelievable. I'm looking for a job. <laughs> That's why I'm here. You know, it's, uh, it's amazing. I've, uh, I've been in basketball now um, in the pros, I think 24, 25, half my life. I don't want to tell you my age. Um, and I have nothing to do right now. I, I walk around the streets with a sign, uh, hire, hire me, hire me. I'll coach anybody right now. So if you guys have any uh, grade school teams or uh, high school teams, that I, I just need to scream at someone. And I haven't been able to do that in a while, and it's, it's really bothering me. Um, I'd like to share this story uh, with you, and I, I'd like to share a couple stories with you. but. Um, after my um, rookie year in the NBA as a player, I, uh, I thought I was uh, like really special. I, uh, I made the all rookie team, I made the all rookie defensive team, we, we made it to the playoffs, I was starting. Uh, that summer, I uh, went to San Diego and played in the summer league. And, and back then, as, as Bob Ryan would know, we actually had summer leagues where uh, the actual players played. It wasn't just the rookies and the free agents. I played for my first three years, not because Mike Fratello, who was my coach, wanted me to. Uh, it's because I wanted to play basketball. That's what I was. I was a basketball player. So anyway, I got the MVP uh, of the uh, Summer League in, in Southern California, in, in San Diego. And I decided to go to Hawaii and take, uh, at the time it was uh, my girlfriend, now my wife of, of 25 years. Uh, yeah, that, she deserves a applause. I, I really believe that works a lot because I'm, I'm usually here in Boston and she's in Orlando. Uh, so that way she loves me more every time I come home. It's terrific. But we go to Hawaii and I decide that I'm gonna go for a long jog, a long, to get, you know, you, Back then, you, you got in shape a little bit during the summers. So I go for this long jog. I'm feeling good about myself. And I finish up, and I'm sweating, and I'm on, I'm on the beach. It's beautiful. And down, further down the beach, there's this gigantic guy. And when I say gigantic, he's over, the guy was over seven feet tall, and he was jumping rope. He was jumping rope. Uh, and back then, they used to have these what they called heavy ropes. Uh, they're about five or ten pounds, and he's jumping and jumping. I'm sweating. I don't know who it is, and I get closer and closer. And I realize when I get, you know, close enough that I can recognize him, uh, it's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So I'm sweating, and, you know, we played the Lakers twice that year, uh, the Hawks. I was with the Atlanta Hawks, and we actually beat them one time. And as I get closer, he drops the ropes, he puts his hand out and says, hey, kid, no autographs. And I'm looking, what? <laughs> I tell my players that every year. And the message behind that story is, and I tell my players this before the game one every year, how can you play a team twice and a guy not even know your name? That, that means you, you're not as good as you think you are, um, and you need to get to work. So the first time I, I told that story, uh, we had a guy on our team named Al Jefferson, uh, who was a young guy at the time. And we were playing the Houston Rockets, and Al went off for a huge game. And every time down the floor, I heard him yelling, what's my name? What's my name? Uh, I tell everybody that because we can't go through life uh, without people recognizing the work of people like Bob Elias and, and Bob Ryan and, and the, these people up here. You know, when you look up, they've done the work and we know their name. We know who Mel King is uh, because he's done great work here uh, and they deserve a, a round of applause.
You know what I, I love about sports is um, that at the end of the game, there's a scoreboard. You know, you think about it, at the end of the game, there's a scoreboard and um, it's a contest and you know who the winner and the loser is after every game. And it gives you uh, clarity. It's no debate who won or lost. You know, if you watch our games, you can see all the, the talking now and players talking back and forth. But at the, when the buzzer rings at the end of the fourth quarter, it's clear who won. Um, and, and that's the type of clarity I think at times uh, we need uh, in our life. You know, it would be nice that uh, right now in, in Congress, if there was a scoreboard, wouldn't it? It would be phenomenal right now. We could just, if they could put up a score for us right now. Um, you know, I'm a lucky man when, when I, I think about myself and my life growing up um, because I knew what I wanted to do as a kid. You know, I think a lot of people and a lot of kids, especially who we work with out in our communities, we, we got to give them direction uh, and, and we got to give them dreams. Uh, you know, I'm in the first grade and I knew I wanted to be a pro basketball player. And you know, it's funny, I didn't even want to be a pro basketball player. I just wanted to be a basketball player. I never even used the word pro. I just loved the game of basketball and that's what I wanted to be. Uh, and, and when you have a dream and when you have a goal, uh, it, it gives you direction. It allows you to look at people out in front of you and have role models. You know, it was easy for me. I had sports role models as a kid. Uh, Muhammad Ali, for me as a kid, uh, was just a tremendous role model. Uh, Walt Frazier, uh, Earl Monroe, those were guys that I looked up to. But I also, I had some pretty poor role models growing up as a kid too, and I thought that was just as important. Uh, I think those things are, are really important for kids as well. You know, I grew up in the Chicago area, and um, I had two guys that I always think about, you know, from my neighborhood, from Maywood. You think about it, I went to a high school called Proviso East High School. It's a small community in Chicago, and it's produced 11 NBA players from one high school. It doesn't recruit. It's not one of those schools that you can go out and get. It's just n a normal kids from the neighborhood. And, and I really believe the reason Maywood is the name of the town has been successful in that is because not just the, the role models that have made it, uh, but the guys who haven't. Uh, I, I, the guy that I think about more than anything that helped me, the two, one is a guy named Larry Yates. No one's ever heard of Larry Yates because Larry Yates never made it. He was a great high school player. He played for Proviso East High School, and no one knows his name uh, because he did all the things you wouldn't do to make it. Uh, and, and he got himself in trouble, and he didn't make it. But I would see him at the park as a kid, still dominating. And so when you look out at the Ali's and the Walt Frazier's of the world, you look at the Larry Yates at the park, at your local park, and, and you love him, but you say, I don't want to be that. Uh, I don't want to be the guy telling the stories at the park about what I could have done and what I should have done. Uh, I want to be a doer. And, and I made that to myself. The best player I've ever played with that you've never seen is a guy named Ricky Wilson who played on my team um, in high school. He was a terrific player, could have gone anywhere in the country in college and couldn't because of his grades and because of other things. And uh, Ricky and I are still very close, very good friends, uh, but you haven't heard of Ricky for the same reasons. So use those examples uh, with your kids and, and in the community, they see them. They see them every day. Um, visualizing what you want to do is so important and having a dream is so important. Uh, and, and just having a determination to be successful is great, uh, but you have to have perseverance. You have to, and you have to visualize. I tell this story a lot is uh, when we, we won it in 2008, I think that was a year, is that correct, Bob? <laughs> Forgive me, I, I honestly forget years. I just know we won it, and, and that's what we need to know. Um, when we got Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett, uh, 
I think I just broke a rule, didn't I, Bob? Well, when we got those guys called the Big Three, I actually can't say their names uh, due to the thing that we're in. I can't even say that. What are we in? Does there, anybody know what we're in right now? Okay, so you can say it for me. What is it? Thank you. Um, so in 2008, we, we, we get these players, and I'm concerned um, everyone talked about us winning it one year, but not the year that we got everyone. They thought it would take a year. And so I had an idea that I, uh, I thought I would get the big three together and we would go on a little trip of Boston around the city. So what I did, I had them meet me at my apartment at 8 a.m. Um, and so when they get there, and I'll, the guy with the initials KG, um, <laughs> KG uses the, um, the F word as a uh, noun, verb, adjective. <laughs> he's, he wants to know why he's here at 8 o'clock in the morning. Why, why is he at my apartment in the lobby at 8 o'clock in the morning? And, he, and he's throwing the, that word around. Uh, Paul's laughing. Uh, Ray is laughing. But KG just keeps going. He just keeps going. And finally, um, our transportation pulls up. It's the duck boat. <laughs> so Paul knew exactly what it was for because Paul had been in Boston longer than me. He knows when you get on the duck boat as a pro athlete, it means you've won the championship and you're going on the parade route. Well, it was preseason. Obviously, we hadn't won anything. Uh, but we come out of my apartment and Kevin is, uh, what the F is this? Why are we getting on this effing thing? What is this? He, he's just going at it. He's having a ball. Um, and I told him we're going for a ride. Um, so we get on the boat and we go around the city. And as we were going around, I told them that we're going on the exact route that the Boston Red Sox went when they won the World Series and the New England Patriots went on when they won the Super Bowl. And this is the route that we're going to go on at the end of the season. And I wanted you to visualize this route. I wanted you to see this route and go on it. And so we did. And we went around the road. And you know what's amazing? You know, Boston calls itself a sports city. One person on that entire ride noticed that those three big guys and me were sitting on the boat and one person yelled out, this is where you're going to be in June. You're god darn right this is where you're going to be. <laughs> Only one guy in Boston noticed that. <laughs> well, when we got off the boat, and, and, and this is why I'm here. Uh, when we got off the boat, I um, introduced a word to the team that we still use. And to me, this word should be used today um, it should be used in everything we do. The word is Mbutu. It's a South African word uh, that I learned uh, that summer. I was at a, a board meeting, actually, and one of the board members uh, who was living in South Africa asked me, um, had you ever heard of Mbutu? And I said, no, I've never heard of that. What is that? Uh, I thought it was a clothing lie. I, I, didn't, I had no idea what it was. And so she explained it to me. And you know, I decided to, to give you this word. Uh, and this word is for ABCD. This word is for Boston. This word is for everyone. Uh, the word in Butu is it's not just a word. It's a way of life. It's the way you should live your life. Uh, it's the essence of being human. If you have Mbutu, you're a person through other people. A person is a person through other persons. I can't be a human in isolation. I need to, you to be all you can be so that I can become me and all that I can be. We need each other. Our players still talk in Mbutu terms. Uh, if I bring a mill on a plane, Big Baby comes to me and says, can I have a piece? Probably. But what he says is, did you bring a meal for everybody? 
this is how we have to live. Um, groups like ABCD are under attack right now. And I'm, I try not to be political, but I am. We have to get out and vote. When, when I keep hearing about the debt, and I'm all for cutting the debt, but I'm not for cutting people. And I don't want to use a hatchet when I'm cutting the debt. Uh, we have to use a scalpel. I, this is a, a huge, huge period right now. Groups like ABCD are under attack, people. I'm telling you, you can hear it every day when you hear uh, the political climate going on now. And we, we have to get out and vote. We have to get out and get involved. And we have to put a face. We have to put a face to the things that they're talking about cutting. I think it's, it's really easy to go into a ballroom or to go into uh, Congress uh, and the Senate and cut when there's no face to it. I think that's easy to do. I think our job is to show them uh, what they're cutting, uh, show them the programs that they're trying to cut out. You know, we, we spend trillions in military. Uh, we spend trillions in all kinds of things. Uh, but we're not willing to spend on people. And, and we have to make everyone understand this, and it's huge for us. Uh, this year, uh, Bob and I, Bob Ryan and I, and Bob Elias, and, and basically ABCD, I didn't do much work. I lended my name. Uh, we started this Hoop Dreams. Uh, we're going to do it every year. Uh, <laughs> We're going to make it bigger. We're going to keep making it better. Um, I actually thought about playing uh, this year, but then I woke up and realized that uh, I couldn't do that. But uh, we're going to keep getting this, Bob. We're going to make this something. And uh, you know, this year, everyone just played. Uh, if you know me, I think there should be a winner and loser at some point. And so pretty soon, we're going to turn this into a competition Hoop Dream, where we have the, the, uh, a winner uh, of Hoop Dreams, where they may have to play multiple games. And, you know, uh, I think the age group, you have to be over, I don't know what age, uh, because we saw kids, we may put an age group to it. The problem with that is the trainer would be the MVP if we got too old, so we don't want to do that. But we are, we're going to keep making it better and better and better, and that's what we want to do. Uh, I want to end with a couple of things. Um, uh, there was a survey done the year after we won the championship uh, by a Harvard group, actually. And what the survey did was it went around and watched all the sports teams, and it tried to watch how many times they touched each other. Literally, how many times did teams touch each other? And the year that we won it, was the, it was just a coincidence that they did it. They found out in the NBA, the Boston Celtics touched each other more than any other team. And the team that year, uh, and I can't remember who was in last place in the NBA, they touched each other the least amount. And, and so what we have to do is we have to go out and touch people. We have to touch people, and it's, it, it's really, really important. Uh, I do it all the time as a coach. I walk in the locker room sometimes, and in the middle of my talk, I'll just reach out and touch someone. You remember when you were, or, or now, when you're in church and, you, and your pastor would get up and say, say hello to the person next to you. Well, when you were a kid, I couldn't stand that. <laughs> I was thinking, oh my goodness, and, and I, I gotta talk to, I don't wanna talk. Now you understood. You know, sometimes you think when you're a kid, you know everything, and, and when the pastor was talking, you would think, what is this old guy doing? What is he talking about? It didn't matter what church you went in. Every time you go into a Baptist church, at some point, turn around and say hello to your neighbor, or, or say I love you. And you hated it when I was a kid, because you may have to turn around to one of your buddies, and you just didn't do that. You know, and, and so now, 
uh, it's funny how the world, it comes back, you know, and, and when I walk in the locker room, a lot of times our players, they jokingly say, say hello, uh, touch someone, and you should, a and we have to, and we have to keep touching people. Uh, I want to end with this quote, it's an African quote, and if you want to go quickly, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.